Hey, Vlad. Hey, John. Hey, Doug. Good morning. How's it going? Fine. That's good. Hey, John. Good morning. How are you this glorious Thursday? Thursday. <laughs> yes, it's Thursday. Yeah, doing good. Doing good. So, hey, Vlad, I have been to ask you. Just, I'm just curious. Uh, where are you actually located? I mean, Bucharest, Romania. So it's ah. evening, actually, but yeah. Ah, cool. Okay. I was curious. I love it because I can easily fly everywhere in Europe or Asia. Right. Okay. Uh, hey, Ginger. Hey, Doug. Hey, and Tommy, are you there? All right. Thank you. And Heinz, are you there? Yes, I am. Hello. Oh, hey, Eric. Let's spell that. Mm -hmm. This actually may be a really short call. <clears throat> I didn't notice any updates to the uh, subscription book. So I'm not sure how to interpret that. Hey, Christoph. Hey. Yeah, I noticed Just, you this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next three weeks, I will be on vacation. So oh, you will miss okay. me. I'll mark you uh, vacation next three weeks. I'll mark you on the attendance thing for that. Thank you. Thanks. And Doug, are you there? I am. Good morning. Hello. Hey, Javier. Hello. There's someone in the Zoom with an ID of, I can't tell if it's an L or an I, then B-E-R-K. Um, if you could do me a favor and paste your name <clears throat> into the chat, so it's just so I can mark your attendance, I'd appreciate that. And hi, Klaus. Oh, Lucas, hi, okay. Hey, 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 Klaus. All right, Lucas, thank you. Team Red, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, hey, Jeff. Hey. Oh, hey, Colin. Hey, Doug. How's it going? Doing good, and yourself? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, Mike, are you there? I'm here. All right. And Ryan. Yes, I am. Hello. Excellent. Hello. We'll just get started at three after. So just gathering. And hey, William. Hello. Can't type. <laughs> Kind of weird. There's no Clemens. It's unusual. Let me go ahead and ping him because I'd like to get an update from him on a uh, part of the doc. If he's not around, I can do my best to speak to that. Oh, cool. That'd be great. Okay.
Did I miss anybody? I think I have everybody, right? Oh, there we go. Mark is running. Hey, Mark. Oh, no mic yet. Hey, Doug. Hey, Mark. And Lionel, are you there? I'll be bailing in a little bit for that other presentation on cloud events. Yep. Thank you, sir. Hi, Doug. <clears throat> hey, got you, Lionel. All right, it's three after. Why don't I go ahead and get started? Uh, this is Mohammed, by the way. Forget oh, Mohammed, cool. Thank you. I missed you. All right, let's do this thing. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. In terms of AIs, um, I did reach out to a couple of different people um, in the CNCF um, organization, in particular Liz Rice, uh, who chairs up the COC, and she said it was okay for us to send a note to the TOC as opposed to a formal presentation, just to update, update them on our status. So Mark and I are working on that. Um, if you're really, really interested, you could look at the tail end of the, of the subscription discovery doc, it's the rough draft that we're working on. But I don't think there's anything too controversial in there. So once Mark and I settle on the exact wording, I'll just send that out as an email to the TOC and uh, I'll probably BCC uh, one of our mailing lists here. So you guys can see that when it goes out. Um, with that, community time. Anything from the community that people would like to bring up? All right, moving on. KubeCon EU. So I did create a planning doc just to gather all of our thoughts and activities there. So let me bring that up here. So a couple of things. First of all, if you are planning on going, please add your name to the list here just so that we can keep track of it for face-to-face -face planning purposes in terms of making sure we have a big enough room. And also we will be having a kiosk at the ask me anything kind of booth thing. And I wanna know who I can hit up for potentially manning that booth. Um, so uh, don't use this as an excuse for not putting your name there. Um, <laughs> we will need volunteers, so please. Um, okay, so for the 35 minute session, I'm still trying to find out from the workflow guys who's gonna be presenting there and what their abstract is gonna be. Um, I think they've been busy or, or sick or something, so I haven't been able to sync up with them. Uh, but the current status is a five minute quick update on cloud events, followed by the bulk of it on, um, on the workflow stuff, okay? Now for our intro session, uh, we agreed to a quick update on um, cloud events and then an overview of the description API. Um, I don't mind doing the cloud event stuff unless someone else really wants to do it. Um, but if you do either want to do that or the subscription API spec, just put your name here. Just because you see a name in any of these things, don't hesitate to put your name if you really wanna do it as well. This is just for the list of people to choose from and then we'll figure out who's actually gonna do it later. So don't be uh, shy if you already see a name on any, on any of these spots. On the deep dive, um, here is the abstract that Scott gave me that I sent in anyway. And he's volunteered to be a speaker there. Uh, given it's a hands-on lab, we probably don't need too many speakers per se, but um, if you do want to join Scott on the stage to talk about stuff, that'd be great. Um, however, we will probably need several people to help out to walk around the lab to help, you know, the actual participants do stuff if they get stuck. So we will need as many people down here as possible. So please add, think about adding your name here as a lab helper. And as part of this, we probably also need to decide which SDKs we're going to focus on. Uh, is it going to be just one to keep it easy for us maintaining this stuff or our presentation perspective, or do we want to potentially have a couple of different ones people can choose from? Um, no decision on that yet, but be thinking about that one. Um, my, my plan there is, today, but, um, I, mean, I want to set up like a few levels of, of like, there's a hello world and then there's uh, maybe something a little more complicated and then receiver and sender oh, and my pair. So, and then uh, um, implement that as, as references in some sort of GitHub repo. And so but, people um, could pick their language and then try the, the exercise and they could help and then they could cheat off the actual version of the source if they want. Sounds good. Uh, Vlad, your hands up. Will everybody use their own laptop or how will this be? Where will yeah, this be? Yeah, it's, it's bring your own laptop. Yeah. So as we get closer, Oh, um, I need to remind myself to make sure that I tell the um, uh, the event organizers to update the the description to here here to make sure it's perfectly clear that if you're going to attend the session, you really need to bring a laptop. Otherwise, it's not nearly as exciting. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. I was thinking like a five minute intro and then thirty minutes to kind of walk around the room and help people go through the exercises. Yep. Okay. Any other questions about that little bit? 
Okay, now question for you guys. Um, I did confirm that we will have an answer bar, ask me anything kind of a thing, which is the booth in the main, in, in one of the big halls there. And apparently there are three different options we could do. We can do uh, dedicated a kiosk all to ourselves, but it basically means someone has to be there full time or it has to be manned full time, I should say. Um, the other options are either half time, dedicated AM or PM, or they, they, they shared, they described this one as shared cast staff a few hours. I didn't know what that meant. I'm assuming it means more like it's just sort of random, whatever people are available, they stop by kind of thing. Not 100% sure. Um, however, I'd like to know from you guys how you feel about this. Do you want to try to staff it full time? Do you think there's going to be enough interest in people you know, from the audience? Because I can, you know, I can. I can be the nag to, to try to get everybody to sign up if we want to do full time, but I don't want to pester people if, if everybody thinks it's too much. Any preferences? Okay, Scott says half time. Anybody else have a preference or opinion? When you say full time, do you mean full time throughout the, the conference or just for the first day? I think it's full time through the conference, and here are the hours up here. Sorry. So it's it's a it's a non-trivial task. <laughs> I would say look look to staff it during you know any of the parties or other bigger events that might be occurring within it. Okay, that feels a little more towards like the third option. I say Nat, um, this is Ginger. Nat did this last uh, at the San Diego one, mm -hmm. and I will say the first day, if you're doing it all the whole time, first day is a very very long day because you have. The regular hours and then you've got the sponsor showcase so just fyi it's a very long day <laughs> was there a lot of traffic um thankfully we had a lot of traffic but derek was also in the keynote so i think that helped our traffic um with regards to the other kiosks um i think prometheus was right next to us they had quite a bit of um of traffic throughout the whole conference um i couldn't really see the other ones as much um I know Fluent D was next to us, um, and they had a booth the whole time, but I will say that they didn't have people there the whole time, even though you're supposed to. So, yeah. And so what they did is if you only booked for certain hours, um, they would come out and switch the signage. So Who? you would, the st whoever the staff is that would do it, I don't know if it's CNN, CF staff or if it's um, the conference staff, but they would come out and switch the signage. So. If it's cloud events for the morning, then it would have a cloud event sign. And then if it was somebody else in the afternoon, they would just change the sign to a different project. So. Okay, well, thank you. That's good to know. Yeah, but it was, I think it was very um, uh, worthwhile for sure. So based upon your experience, just to put you on the spot here, if you were to choose of those three options, which one would you choose for us? Um, I probably would pick part-time um, if you're, if the people that are attending the conference want to go do anything else. Just because, like I said, if, if you're supposed to staff it full time, the CNCF does want someone there that can speak about the project, um, you know, pretty well all the time. Right. And when you say part time, is that option two or three? Um, I, I would say two. Okay. Three is kind of weird. I'm not quite sure about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Vlad, your hands up. Thank you, Ginger. Uh, Vlad, your hands up. Yep. Can we post a schedule or something if we choose the second or the third option? I remember in San Diego, I wanted to chat with somebody at the booth and there was nobody there and it was unclear which were what. So having like a public, I don't know, timetable or something. And I don't mean public in the sense that in the working group, I mean public like on the CNCF website, sked, whatever. That would help a lot. I can take an action item to ask about that from the staff. Um, they, they do have that on the schedule. Um, oh, so go. if you look at the schedule, it will have something like, um, like meet the maintainers or something like that um, in built into the schedule. And it'll have your project and it'll show when the, the booth is staffed. I did not know that, sorry. Mm -hmm. No worries, I just know because I saw it on the schedule when I had to be there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, personally, I'm leaning a little more towards number two, just because this third one just confused me and it seemed a little too random for my taste. Um, so I'm leaning a little more towards two. What are the, 
Um, Scott, I know you said two as well. Um, what do people think? Landing on two? Anybody have an objection with that? Well, I guess the only question is, is it always AM or always PM? Because otherwise I don't see how that's... Uh, yeah, I mean, we like we can, it, we maybe we can do one day and one yeah. one p.m. in case people want to have some flexibilities. So we have a little. I don't have to sign up till February fourteenth, so I can take the action item to find out a little more detail. Whether it's if we say a.m., it's always a.m. or do we get to pick a.m. p.m. per day? I can ask yeah. about that. Good, good question. Oops. Okay. Cool. I can do that. Okay, um, let me think, is there anything else? So um, I think we'll be able to get a room for the face-to-face -face meeting, but they won't be able to tell me until February 14th, which isn't that big a deal if you were already planning on going. However, if your travel approval, travel plans, whatever it may be, are contingent upon us having a face-to-face, -face, you may not find out until February 14th, which I think is within um, that right around that four-week window for our governance stock of announcing, of announcing a face-to-face. -face. So just be warned, um, uh, you may want to get your travel approval in now and maybe, not necessarily lie, but tell your manager or whoever that you think there will be a face-to-face -face meeting. We just, we can't know for sure until then. Okay. All right. Anything else relative to KubeCon we need to talk about? You can always say that you'll meet Doug face-to-face. -face. That's always exciting. Yes. I'm sure that'll get everybody on board. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Can we get a room outside of uh, the conference if we have to? I'm sure someone has an office around uh, Amsterdam. Um, that is definitely a possibility. Um, that would make it harder, though, because it would probably, be, probably have to be more after hours then, which makes it a little bit more difficult to get everybody together. But we can definitely look at that, yeah. Yeah, OK. So yeah, let's hold off and see what they say. I, like I said, I. I think it'd be very odd for them not to be able to find a room for two hours, um, but we'll see. Okay, anything else relative to the face-to-face? -face? I'm sorry, in relative to the KubeCon. Okay, um, Vlad, I assume your hand is old? Yep, it was old. Okay, cool. Um, okay, I think we already talked about all these things. That's good. All right. All right, SDK, we did not have a meeting last week, so nothing to talk about. I believe we will have a meeting today, um, right after this one's over. Um, so anybody on the SDK side of the house, please prepare to join. Um, Kathy, I believe is sick, unfortunately, so she's not on the call. Do we have anybody else from the workflow subgroup on the call who wants to give status? No, okay. Um, in that case, uh, in terms of issues for cloud events itself, uh, these are still being worked in the background, I assume. However, this one is new. I don't want to necessarily talk about it too much here other than to poke um, people to take a look at it because it's a, it's a question about serialization of JSON. And I know that we talked about this in the past and I just could not remember the definitive answer. So I was hoping maybe like Scott, since you have obviously heavy involved in the Golang SDK, maybe you could take a look at this and, and give your take on on whether there really is a problem or not, or if not, why it's not a problem. Does that sound okay, Scott? Yeah, yeah, I'll take a look. Okay, appreciate it, thank you. And of course, anybody else is free to look at it. I just, I just know, I think Scott's played in that area. That's why I was picking on him. Yeah, the, the spec is a little loose in that yeah. area. Yeah, and I know we went back and forth, I think, on that a couple of times. Okay, anything else relative to the cloud event spec itself before we move on to the, to the new spec? All right, moving forward then. Um, okay, since Clem is not on the call, Mike, would you like to update us on the status of things? Uh, I don't have any, any major update to provide other than the comments in the doc. I'm trying to get everybody, uh, I proposed a time tomorrow to talk. Um, try to hear back from everybody. Okay. Um, unfortunately, <clears throat> I did not notice very many edits really at all in the doc this week at all. So that leads me to believe we may not have anything to, to discuss and may have a very, very short phone call. So let me open this up. Are there topics on the spec that people want to bring up at any scope level? Hey, this is Ryan. Yeah, I can just confirm that. Um, unfortunately for the subscriptions part, um, 
majority of us had a combination of heavy travel schedules and being sick <laughs> over the last few weeks. So um, we didn't meet this week, but uh, we do have a follow-up on Tuesday. So we'll hopefully have a more meaningful update next week. Okay. Just out of curiosity, was Clemens one of the people that were sick? Uh, no, I believe it's Kathy and myself. I know Clemens has a pretty heavy conference schedule this week and has been doing a bit of traveling. So Okay. Okay. I was, I was going to give him a hard time, but okay. If he has travel plans, then I can't avoid that. Okay. Um, um, yeah, go if ahead. We have, yeah, if we have time, so last regular call, we also talked about the subscriptions on uh, sort of the back propagation of a subscription up to the original publisher. And well, Clemens is not on the call, but he said it's a difficult topic and he kind of wants to push it back. And I thought a bit about it. But from my perspective, it's not so difficult. So I don't know if it's appropriate if not stop me, if we discuss in this detail now. But my thought is it's actually not so difficult because you have the filters and you just take all your filters, you propagate them up one step, and then the other guys can do what they want with these filters. If you apply filters on your events that don't apply to your events, it's fine. So I don't see where he thinks it's so difficult. Anybody want to comment on that? I'm, I don't have an opinion right now myself on that. I'm tempted to say that might be a better discussion for that other phone call or to wait until text appears in the spec to comment on it. But that's just, yeah. my, that's just my initial reaction. Yeah, so I, I have been thinking about this also quite a bit. So that's also why I added this uh, eventing domain section further down. Um, but I, I also agree that maybe in the other call we can discuss it. Do you so, want to discuss it now? Okay. Uh, well, I mean, it's up to you guys. We have nothing else on, on, on the agenda, to be honest. <laughs> so it's up to you. Well, um, it depends really. I mean, I, I brought up this abstract model of eventing domains because, I mean, there can be different messaging technologies behind. Um, I don't know, Christoph, what, what scenario you have in mind exactly. So um, if it's uh, also about uh, um, using different protocols, so then you might have something that's uh, bridging between different um, eventing technologies. Um, so if you're propagating a subscription upstream, you, you might need to create things like queues and, and delete them again if the subscription is uh, deleted, I don't know. Um, yeah, could happen. I, um, what would I, yeah. I mean, maybe first we can discuss if we want to, do we have this discussion right now? I don't want to keep other people on the call and board. I think I won't be able to join the call on Tuesday, oh, but I can try to make it. You, you could send a note to the mailing list to get your thoughts you know, down on paper for people to read it. Yeah, that would be an option. Or, or, or I'm sorry, just add it straight to the doc here, at least, because you don't have to wait for the, the subgroup to add comments to the, to the doc. You can add your own, you know, just make sure it's out there for people to think about. Okay. And by the way, Christoph, it would be great to, to meet you on Slack. I mean, we're in the same time zone, I suppose. So uh, one of the few guys I can discuss with um, during the day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll try. I'm pretty busy with work right now. Um, yeah, me vacation. too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but okay. I'll try. I'll try to join the Slack channel. Okay. Okay. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Colin, you came with mute. Um, yeah, just with the eventing domain, I mean, I, I think you get a lot of this stuff for free with most of the protocols and, and this looks like it's trying to address the limitation you have with uh, HTTP because there's really no central server. So, um, oh, go on. Okay, uh, so um, uh, that was not the intention. So actually we are working with an MQP broker below this. So mm -hmm. uh, the reason I wrote all this is more to um, establish something like a control plane for the eventing aspects and hide the messaging a bit more. So it's not really supposed to be a, a new broker or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, I wasn't insinuating that okay. this would need to be a new broker. No, I, I, I get that. I was just sort of stating that with all the um, 
protocols listed, uh, and, and I alluded to, the, alluded to this in the comment as well, it looks like we've got a real discrepancy between the behavior of the HTTP protocol and the others, which are, are broker-based. Uh, and what I was just saying is in, in, this eventing domain is very, very easy with a broker-based uh, uh, broker protocol, right? So MQTT, NATS, uh, whatever. But then when you get into HTTP land, this becomes actually very difficult. And I, I see the problem you're trying to solve. I'm just sort of stating that there may be more here than th this. This could get into a, a very deep pit. Okay. Yeah, I see. So yeah, for HTTP, as it is usually point to point, I agree that's more difficult. Um, so a extreme example of an eventing domain would be just um, a single, I mean, a point to point uh, connection. So you wouldn't then have a lot of producers and consumers, but just a single one and combine them then by a link, basically. And then it wouldn't really be uh, um, really a dedicated domain or something. It'd be just hidden in, inside the, the producer and the consumer could also think of it that way because you would still establish something like trust uh, between those two. True. So yeah, it's meant, I mean, there are a lot of messaging products and also services in the, in the cloud providers. And it's, uh, it's true. Um, uh, it was more with those uh, more pub sub oriented services in mind. That's true. Yeah, I, I think it's a good idea to call this stuff out. This is this is good. Okay, anything else? Um, I left a comment on, you know, uh, defining a goal around how consistent we want to be across uh, protocols. So w one thing I really, really like is when products just work out of the box. And I know it's a really uh, lofty goal, but it would be great if we could provide some guidance around same defaults so that you can just swip, swip, yeah, pardon me, switch between MQTT and NATS or MQTT and HTTP, what have you with uh, minimal configuration changes. And setting a goal to this would help inform what this wire protocol might look like and, uh, and maybe even uh, bubble up to the API. Sounds reasonable to me. Is there actually text you can think of to just stick into the spec right now that the other that the sub team may be able to pick up and grab? Not off the top of my head, but I could take a stab at it. Yeah, I would, I would say do so. I mean, it, it seems reasonable to me. Okay. Anybody else want to comment on that? I know Klaus, you're, you're you commented in the chat. Anybody else? I think everybody wants easy, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe Vila wants to vote for Harvard. To build. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other things you want to bring up? Oh, Klaus? Well, yes, uh, yeah. it's not really about the subscriptions. It was actually the issue I opened uh, more than a year ago, I think, about the nested um, events. Oh, yeah. So I've, I've still got that action item and I'm honestly a bit clueless after our last discussion. Um, so originally I brought it up in the SDK call two weeks ago because I thought it was just um, uh, more or less an implementation detail in the SDKs. But um, the interesting enough, the discussion brought up that it's um, different. So. Um, so I think over, yeah. So it, as you can see, I brought this up in, in February, 2018. So it was even before we had um, 0.1 of cloud events. Um, and I think f for me, at least this nested event case is not really relevant right now, but <laughs> still as I, I brought it up and, and, and it was an interesting discussion. Um, so, um, idea is, um, or we had the idea, I think, in the discussion further down, Doug, you, you proposed, I could just write an example um, where one event, like a structured uh, encoded um, event would be nested inside a binary. And um, 
I, when I tried doing this, I ran into the problem that we determined by the content type that um, what the event in that message is. So um, doing this, uh, what is shown here, this, this example is not possible and is also not, not really, and that came out in the discussion two weeks ago, really against the spec. As we uh, say that. No, no, I think it was against the spec. Yes, that's what I said. Uh, sorry if, uh, if I somehow didn't express that clearly. So, uh, exactly. So, uh, the, the idea of the spec, and that I wasn't aware of that too at, at that time, um, is that um, even if you do structured encoding, all the uh, attributes from that structured encoded event can also be um, um, replicated to the header. So, this case that you have one event in the header and another one in the payload is not really possible, at least if you use the normal content type of the cloud events plus JSON. So I really wonder now how this could be solved and um, or if it needs to be solved. I mean, it could also be just some, some node uh, somewhere. Um, I think we could work up an example in the Golang SDK where we make application JSON plus cloud events and it would interpret it correctly. Yeah, so I, I've been reading a bit in this uh, about this media type specification, this RC and, and so on. And plus cloud events is really strange, I think. So, um, as it's, I mean, uh, the, the plus something part is supposed to be a, a structure encoding part. In, in, I don't know, see cloud events in, in, in the line with uh, JSON, XML, and the others somehow seems to be strange to me. But um, yeah, so just, I'm just interested uh, to hear some more opinions on this actually. Um, um. I, I, just, I just read the issue for the first time. Um, the the thing that comes to my mind there is in, in is uh, in that API gateway issue is causality that there might be an independent event from the API gateway. It could reference that it is caused by the other event. Yes. Uh. But it, but isn't that really just talking then about? maybe adding additional attribute to, to do a relationship? Were you talking, or would that directly affect the, 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 the nesting aspect? I, I mean, I would question if you need to, to, to nest events or not. Um, yeah, as I said, um, I, I created that issue in the beginning when I still was, was trying to, to make my, my mind uh, about all this eventing and, um, by now, um, on our end, I would say we, we um, um, definitely want to avoid this nesting. But um, one example where I saw something like this or where it might occur is actually in, in Canadian eventing um, with some of the sources. They, I think, the, like the Canadian, uh, the, the Kafka source, um, I think they create their own event types like Kafka event. And then they already get a message from the log that already contains a cloud event, I think then you would have something like a nested event. But yeah, I, I still think that it's more like an accident, not really desired. Uh, yeah, so I think that particular case is a bug in Knative. Okay, nevertheless, um, if you rely strictly on structured encoding, you could nest events and, and some, SDK that gets um, one structured event nested into another one, and for some reason would like to transcode it to HT to binary uh, on the top level would kind of run into this issue, I guess. So I'm trying to remember <clears throat> the phone call we had about this, and I came to recall you became the conclusion that this example here was technically invalid, and yes. I think part of the reason was because these properties here did not match the properties here. And, and if these appear here, they're supposed to basically be a duplicate of what you see inside the body. Am I remembering correctly? Yes. Okay. Um, the one thing I'm, that always kind of bothered me about that is, <clears throat> I know that the spec says you can copy things up, but does it, 
mandate that if, for example, CE type appears here, it has to match what's in the body? Uh, it's, it doesn't say that. It says that the authority is the body. Right. It, the, the processor would just look at this and say it's formatted incorrectly. Okay, so, well, or, or worst case scenario, he looks at these and says, because of this value here, everything's supposed to be in the body, so if I'm going to be looking at the body, I can just ignore these. That's right. Okay, thank you. So would that then imply yeah. you can't do nested? No, 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 you can. You just have to say the application content type is application JSON, maybe plus cloud events to signal that the processor that processes the body That's right. pops it into a cloud event. So, so flip those two things and I think it just works. It would work, but it looks definitely strange, but <laughs> maybe yes. Well, just out of curiosity, what happens if you don't do the plus cloud events and, and you just do this? Is that? Yeah, that's valid too. That's I was going to say that is valid, yes. right? You would serialize that as a cloud event JSON uh, structured object, and it would just work. So, so Klaus, is the answer here to put something in the primer that says if you want to do it as of right now, this is really the only way to do it? Yes. Could test. I mean, <laughs> what what? Um, we can test the Go SDK if it does it. I mean, if if you if it receives a um, yeah, it, it will. I can I can add a test for this, <laughs> and and we can add a custom uh, decoder for the application content type. Or sorry, for the the media type of application JSON plus cloud events. Yeah. Okay, I mean, it probably it's, it's already wasted effort as prob it's not that relevant. So, although actually thinking about it, you don't really need that. That's, yes. that's a hint to know what the, the format is, but it's really just JSON and Cloud Events doesn't really care about the opaque body. Okay. Uh, that, that was a bit my question. Well, um, why do we have to have it like in the spec? You have like the data and in the data you can have whatever you want including uh, another nested event. So that's up to you uh, if you really want to do it. But then you don't get all the uh, transformation from one protocol to the other, obviously. Um, but that's then up to you. So you can do it if you absolutely have to. But I don't see the value of adding the complexity of all this nesting into the spec. Well, okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, but I thought I thought your Heinz, you're looking at putting something into the primer just as guidance, right? Something like this, yes. I mean, we can also just close the issue, actually. But. Well, I think it's interesting. I mean, because I was just thinking about this is obviously this is one way to do it, right? You have structured uh, around binary or binary around structured, but it might also be interesting to show a structured within a structured, where I think as yes. Christoph was just saying, this stuff doesn't appear here, but there's another cloud event in here, and then you have the content type up here, and what that would look like. Right? Yeah, I mean, in that case, you could choose uh, cloud events plus JSON, but um, yes, it's just that in the in the binary case, um, the content type is, uh, yeah, somehow used in, in, or yeah, it's just special because of this binary case. Yeah. I mean, as, as you said, technically, we don't think we have to do anything, but I, I always think that if we come up with a question and we're the experts on this stuff, it may, it's useful then to put into the primer for people who are not in okay. our position, you know, even, even if it's just for informational purposes only. Okay. But that's just so yeah, I can, I can add that to the primer. And then I guess the recommendation would be in any case to just use this application JSON, even for the structured case, otherwise it would be really confusing. I mean, if you if you do one structured event in, inside another one, you could technically still use uh, cloud events plus JSON instead of just JSON. But um, it, you lost me there for a second because I think did did you say that if it was structured, you can just use application JSON and not application cloud events plus JSON? 
Yes, yeah, otherwise, I, yeah. I think clauses is correct because I don't think it would round trip converting a wrapped message between binary and structured if it wraps a structured object because I think it promotes the content type. And in that case, you get into the same situation of the above example. So oh, yeah. it seems like primer text is probably in order if you're going to wrap cloud events. You okay with that, Klaus? Uh, yes, I think so, yes. Okay. Okay, any other questions or comments on this one? Okay, any other topics at all then about either the new spec, cloud events, or anything? Any plans to cut a new release of cloud events, or is it just minor tweaks? I think we've only had one tweak, which was the <clears throat> the, the, the sentence that says it was a draft, right? I don't think we've changed anything else yet. Did, did I miss something? No, I was just thinking about our ability to rev the spec independently of the version of cloud event, like the bug fix semver uh, section or something. I'm not quite sure what you're asking. I apologize. I'm not so following. We could still send uh, 1.0 events, but the spec is 1.0.1, .1, for example. Yeah. I'm trying to remember, did we say wait a minute. The, the spec version required how to be source? I don't remember if we ever talked about what would happen if we do a, a patch version, if the if this version or would change. I don't think it would change, to, right? Because patches should be completely compatible. But they wouldn't have the new features. It would be 1.1. .1. I think that'd be a, yeah, yeah. That's, I'm, that's why I said patch, not minor, yeah. So what's your actual question then? I apologize. So if we do a 1.0.1, .1, so like a uh, declarative text in the spec, and we want to ship a new version of that because it's it's better, but it didn't change the API. I I think off the cuff, I would say the spec version string itself does not change. Right. Okay. Great. But but that's just me. I, I don't I don't think we have actually said that in the spec, and that maybe that's something we need to add. Or we can wait till we get to it. <laughs> I'd agree with this. I mean, if we have a typo and we fix it and we really want to release a patch version, I don't see why a new yeah. version is relevant in any way to uh, anybody who uses cloud events. Yeah, that might be something worthy of mentioning someplace in our primer or something that just so people understand our versioning scheme. I'll, I'll double check. I have this vague recollection we may actually say something about that someplace, but I'll, I'll, I'll check. And if not, maybe I'll open issue just so we can think about it. Okay. Anything else people want to bring up? Okay, did I miss anybody for attendance? I think I got all the, late, all the people who showed up at the end. All right, in that case, we are done. Thank you guys. And if you were interested in the SDK call, go ahead and stay on the line. We'll start that one up in a, about two or three minutes just to let people leave. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye bye. All right. Any topics? <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be a very short call. 
Scott, you usually have something exciting to say about the Go SDK Lang. I'm sorry, Go Lang SDK. Scott is taking a small break. You have your eyes on him. Interesting. Well, so, <laughs> you know, somebody always has to have eyes on our Scotty. <laughs> okay, we'll wait. <clears throat> Anybody else have any topics they want to bring up? <laughs> okay, we'll wait and see if Scott has anything when he comes back. Otherwise, it's lunchtime. <laughs> So let's see, we're waiting. We signed up to go to KubeCon. Cool, not too bad. So Vili, are you able to actually see when he comes back? Oh yeah. <laughs> you need to make sure he knows we're waiting for him. It's all oh. about Scott. Yeah, don't tell him that. He's gonna go <laughs> big ego. Uh, Yeah, I mean, you know, when he comes back and if we happen to be in the middle of a discussion how uh, terrible the cloud uh, Go SDK is, then I'm sure he would be super excited to join the conversation in the middle, just throwing it out there. Yeah. Yes. Oh, hey, while we're waiting, um, there was that face-to-face -face meeting between Knative and Kada. What's the yeah. next step in that? I thought there was supposed to be a follow-on meeting. Has that been scheduled yet? Uh, I don't think it has been scheduled yet. Um, there is a CADA call at, I think it's in like whatever, 20 minutes or 10 o'clock my time. So the next meeting slot. And I think there's some uh, chatties about that. Um, I know some folks played with the interaction with the K Native and CADA and seeing where it would kind of fit in and this morning in the channels working group we also chatted about making sure that um, we start uh, th th there's the whole channel spec on sort of kind of what the channels look like mm -hmm. and there was some talk about making sure that in the spec we do not assume too much of a push based uh, mm -hmm. but we also allow for the eventing based uh, sorry pull based models and um, so I basically wrote some folks volunteered them to go ahead and uh, take a deeper look on what does that mean okay did, did you either hear of or take a look at the work that Alec is doing around Kata integration I think he might have talked with Scott yesterday but I didn't know if he if he pinged you as well yeah he didn't ping me but yeah I'm, I'm aware of this this okay. is Aslam uh, yes yes yeah okay cool yep. yeah okay So is Mr. Scott back yet? D minus five seconds. <laughs> okay. Scott, you there? I am back. All right, thank you. So no one else had anything to bring up. I was wondering if you had anything to bring up from the Golang SDK side of things. I do, I do. Okay. Um, we are going to go do a, a version 1.0 release. There's a bit of staging that's going to happen. Um, like massage the API a little bit. Some of the deprecated things are going to get removed so we don't have to continue forwarding them along. And then uh, we're going to start doing strict semver. Okay. So I haven't been following um, the Go SDK for a while and now got back and looked a bit more into it. Um, if I understand that correctly, so there are those two approaches um, ne yeah. right next to each other, the, the bindings and the transports. And Yeah. So at the moment, uh, the plan is we're going to do a one over release that's going to capture the original method uh, and then 
uh, because we're going to do sim for everything else in the repo is going to start having to become API compatible for changes. There's going to be a 2.0 release that drops the original transport implementations in favor of the bindings. Okay. So, so that's kind of where it's going. So, but uh, the, the hope is that if you depend on a certain part of this, the SDK, you can do SEM for fuzzer, fuzzy match and you can stick with 1.0 if you need to, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be end of life in probably, um, I don't know, six months. So V2 is scheduled for around six months, is that what I heard? Yeah, I think, I think that sounds about appropriate. So the 1.0 release, I, if I get time, it's, it's probably going to be cut next week. So before the next meeting for cloud events, or, uh, it'll be 1.0 and Semver. And then there's going to be an effort to go and migrate everything to the 2.0 implementation. And we, we've been coding this strategically so there's pieces that are leveraged in the 2.0 implementation that get migrated out or copied out of the the 1.0 version so we're aware of the strategy and then um, the other thing that's going to come is uh, we're going to document the 2.0 architecture so that it's it's a little more clear what what exactly we're doing and how to add a new uh, binding your own custom bindings and stuff so cool. Um, my the goal is to get 1.0, you know, locked down, released for KubeCon, and for for uh, integration. So this comes because there's there's been some people that would like to integrate with the SDK, but uh, are unwilling to do this. Like in the in the README, it's like by the way, like we're gonna break you, uh, willy nilly. And there's customers that do not want to. Uh, to take on a dependency that doesn't follow somewhere. So even though it's maybe not production ready exactly, there's still some stuff to figure out. We're gonna lock the API down. Makes sense. Yeah. Any other questions for Scott? Okay, any other topics you guys wanna bring up? Do you scroll down a bit? Are you uh, joined this call? because I was interested in Tim's question from the other week. So Golang SDK, super stable, very much evolving, what is super involved and maintaining it. C Sharp SDK, Clemens obviously uses it for Asians, Asia and stuff is maintained, it's stable, so on and so forth. Do we have a, like a list of maintainers for the others? Should we do that? I'm starting to have some interest in cloud events, but a lot of people are a bit put off by the state of the SDKs. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I didn't do my AI. I was supposed to poke the bottom four people. Um, in terms of who the owners are, I can't say who they are offhand, other than I think Fabio might own the Java one. I was gonna just take a look at the commits and see who, who did, all, did all the commits and poke those people to find out the status of these things. Well, maybe we need to have official leads that are kind of yeah. accountable for these things. That would be a good thing. Document that someplace, yes. In the, the specific repos view. You... Yeah. Another AI for me that I'll forget to do. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I was like praising cloud events and they were like super happy about it. And la -di -da -di -da. they, oh yeah, the SDK. They, they wanted to do Python. Yeah. My first question would be, why? Why Python or why, <laughs> why, 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 why cloud events? Why, why Python? <laughs> yeah. A lot of their app is already written in Python. They do all Python. Why not go with that? There's a surprising amount of libraries available for Python, especially they're doing a lot of lambdas. And Python is super well supported there. Whatever makes the money. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else? That's it. All right. I believe we are done then. 
Thanks, guys. And we'll talk again next week or on the SDK in two weeks. Have a good one. Later. Bye. Bye.